Welcome guys to the EM Facts for the Board, part 5 of this video series. I am Sajad Pathan and I will take you through a journey of maxillofacial emergencies once again in this video. Before we begin with our clinical learning, let me talk to you about something which is quite personal to me. Everything in this world comes with a price tag and the price tag is also attached to your success. In this picture, you see Mr. Frank Lloyd Wright who was an architect in America and he, this was his quote, I know the price of success, dedication, hard work and an unremitting devotion to the things you want to see happen. That's enough of philosophy for now. Let's move ahead with eye injuries. In this scenario, you see a 27 year old female is in the emergency department with complaints of blunt trauma with a baseball at the stadium. She complains of swelling left eye and a wound which is seen in the image. When do you consider referral to an ophthalmologist in this patient? What are the features of globe rupture? The nasolacrimal duct opens below which turbinate? What are the indications and contraindications for doing a lateral canthotomy? Oftentimes we come across an eyelid laceration where either try to close them or when we are unsure, we refer them to the maxillofacial surgeons. At times, they may come back and ask us to refer the patient to the ophthalmologist for the closure because they feel that it needs a complete thorough evaluation of the eye. As an ED physician, we need to be aware when do we refer these patients to the ophthalmologist and not to the maxillofacial surgeons or we don't ourselves close these wounds. There are clear indications when do we refer a lid laceration to the eye surgeons. They are as follows. If you suspect an open globe or intraocular foreign body, laceration through the full thickness of the eyelid, laceration with orbital fat prolapse, lacerations through the lid margin, lacerations that involve the nasolacrimal drainage system or if there are poor alignment and or avulsion. How do we diagnose a globe rupture? It may be very obvious when you see a sunken eye and volume loss but at times we may have to pick up a globe rupture based on indirect evidence. You might see an obvious corneal laceration I'm talking about laceration, not corneal abrasions. How do you diagnose a corneal laceration is? By something called as Seidel's test. You put in fluorescein dye in their eye and if the fluorescein seeps through within the anterior chamber, that is obvious of a corneal laceration. As we mentioned earlier, volume loss to the eye will be obvious so you may look at a flattened cornea. If there is a prolapse of the uveal body, which is the iris or ciliary body prolapse, if you see any other iris abnormality, a 360 degree bullous subconjunctival hemorrhage or an obvious intraocular or a protruding foreign body, these six signs will direct you towards a diagnosis of a suspected globe rupture. A prolapsed iris is an obvious sign of a globe rupture. What do we do in these cases? If you look at this image, you will see a teardrop pupil and an herniating iris at the limbus. What you do is consult ophthalmology, place a rigid eye shield. You do not have to do any further examination or manipulation. This will need operative management. In this image, you see a protruding foreign body and the image below, you see a 360 degree bullous subconjunctival hemorrhage. This is also directing you towards a diagnosis of globe rupture. So when you think about a globe rupture, how do you manage these patients? Get a CT scan of the orbit. Keep the patient nil by mouth. No manipulations or examination. No removal of foreign bodies. Do not make the patient lie flat. Make them head and elevated at at least 30 degrees. 
Do not put any teardrops. Prescribe some IV antibiotics, analgesia, antiemetics as appropriate. Speak to the ophthalmology department and get them seen by the eye surgeons. How do you diagnose a full thickness laceration of the eyelid? One, if it is clearly obvious, you will see a full thickness laceration as you see in the image on your right. The image on your left is the same image as that of the scenario we discussed earlier. You see fat protruding through the laceration. The fat pad is usually below the septum. That means the septum has been lacerated for the fat to be coming out. So this is considered as a full thickness laceration. If the lid margins are involved or nasolacrimal system is involved, this, these lacerations need to be handled by the eye surgeons. Before we move ahead, let us talk a bit about nasolacrimal apparatus. If you look closely into the eye of the patient on the medial canthus, you will see two punctum, one on each lid. These punctums are drained by the lacrimal canaliculi or lacrimal ducts into the lacrimal sac. The lacrimal sac opens through the nasolacrimal duct below the inferior turbinate. In general, any laceration on the medial canthus of the eye will need to be assessed and managed by the ophthalmic surgeons. Let us look at another pathology involving the eye and the orbit. An orbit is a closed compartment and whenever something builds up in that compartment, it will lead to an orbital compartment syndrome. If there is blood or air behind the eye, it will compress the optic nerve and will give rise to a defect called as relative afferent pupillary defect. How do you diagnose a relative afferent pupillary defect? If you shine the light in the unaffected eye, the pupil dilates and with consensual reflex, the affected pupil also dilates. But if you shine the light in the affected eye, that pupil doesn't respond. This is known as a relative afferent pupillary defect or a Marcus Gunn pupil. A Marcus Gunn pupil can be seen in many other pathologies such as optic neuritis in multiple sclerosis. What are the clinical findings of an orbital compartment syndrome? You, obviously, you might see a markedly decreased visual acuity, an afferent pupillary defect, proptosis, diffuse subconjunctival hemorrhage, the eye may feel rock hard, the orbit may feel tight. And there is complete ophthalmoplegia. The patient is unable to move the eye. How do you manage an orbital compartment once you have diagnosed this condition? You manage an orbital compartment syndrome by doing a simple procedure called as lateral canthotomy and inferior cantholysis. How you perform a lateral canthotomy and cantholysis will be dealt in a separate video. If you look closely in this image, you see the surgeon holding the curved scissor with the curvature pointing caudally. This is very important and I'll discuss this why holding the curvature downwards is more important. When do you do it? If you suspect an orbital compartment syndrome. When you do not do it is if you are not trained in doing one or if there is an evidence of a globe rupture or globe injury then you need to refer these patients to the eye surgeons. Let us look at the complications of doing a lateral canthotomy and inferior cantholysis. In general, the benefits of doing this procedure outweighs the risk. As with any procedure, you may give rise to an infection or an abscess formation. If you have gone too close to the upper eyelid, you may injure the lacrimal gland and the lacrimal artery which will lead to further bleeding. There may be poor wound healing leading to restricted eye movements. Once you have done the procedure, you need to monitor for the intraocular pressure and visual acuity. Do not compress the globe and consult the maxillofacial or ophthalmic surgeons once the procedure is done. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell 
put in a like or a comment and I will see you soon with another video in this series. Till then, stay safe. Peace.